Buckle up, the world models are coming. Today, we're hopping into World Labs, a platform that well, literally lets you wander around inside of an image. And yes, that is kind of insane. But more than that, as we will see today, the application of this technology is, dare I say, a game changer for filmmaking, interactive content, games, and beyond. And what's even better, you can start playing with it today for free. Okay, ready player one. So I've been following World Labs since they uncloaked out of stealth back in December of 2024. There was kind of a number of large world model projects that debuted around that time, including Google's Genie 2. And although both of these, at least on the surface level, might look kind of similar, uh, World Labs is taking a very different approach here. The main issue that we run into with large world models, like we'll say like the Minecraft based Oasis one, uh, Mirage also had one that was kind of like Grand Theft Auto themed. Uh, well, and even truthfully, the big daddy of them all, Google's Genie 3, uh, the thing that they all have in common is that they do have an issue with persistence. These models work by creating an environment and then you can explore them as it generates video frame by frame, which I mean, when you really think about it is kind of insane, but eventually, and while well, given enough time, uh, these models start to decohere, like the whole world begins to melt and they all forget objects that are placed within it. Uh, kind of like me and my keys, except in a world model, my keys may no longer exist. World Labs differs here because it uses Gaussian splats to generate its environments. Uh, side note, Gaussian splats still unclaimed as the greatest punk rock band name ever. And just as a quick backtrack to bring everybody up to speed, uh, Gaussian splats essentially create point-based, well, splats, really, uh, that when combined together create a cohesive 3D environment. The limitation with splats is that generally you're relegated to what you and, well, the model can see. Uh, so while we have object permanence, you still can't see what you can't see. Well, at least until now. So Marble, which is the new World Labs model, uh, will let you take a image like this, say, um, and then when you bring it in, and that will create essentially, you know, a 3D environment based off of your image. Uh, and what's kind of cool is that you can, well, you can turn completely around. So none of this information was obviously in that input image. This is all essentially Marble, you know, creating something new. Uh, and yes, you, you can go wandering around in it as well, uh, which is pretty insane. Um, now, you know, it does weird stuff like, uh, like, like this door here, for example. Um, I don't, I don't know who would put a door here, particularly when, uh, you've got a drop like that. I mean, if we're looking at it from the ground level, I mean, yeah, you're going to break a leg. I don't know that that architect needs to be fired. Now there are definitely some limitations to this. We're going to go over that in just a minute, but. I should also point out that it does handle a variety of different aesthetics and you know maintains consistency. So taking one of our uh, grimy 40s noir detective offices and after a quick run through Marble, we can now go wander around uh, our noir detective's office, uh, check out his case files. Um, to note again, uh, we do have an entire back section to this environment that was obviously not present in uh, the input image, we have another desk back here. We're gonna put a lamp back here, it's, uh, it's kind of dark. Uh, and then another desk over here, which I presume is his girl Fridays. Um, controls are handled via the WASD keys, um, and you can actually crane up with the space bar and down with the control key. I did just discover too, you can actually control field of view via uh, the bracket bars as well. So that's actually really, really cool. Creating a 3D world, remarkably pretty easy. Uh, all we have to do is upload an image. So uh, let's grab uh, this image generated up uh, of a uh, some vacation spot, uh, given the blueness of the water, a place that I will not be able to afford. As a note, you can generate via a text prompt. I, I do think that most of us will probably, you know, be going the image route anyhow. And then there are two choices in either going with the Marble 01 mini model, uh, which which actually is finished in about 40 seconds, or the uh, plus model at uh, 10 minutes roughly per generation. I've been using the plus model because um, why not? It's only 10 minutes. Um, so let's fire this off and see what we get. Oh, as a note, it actually does generate a prompt out for you uh, with your image. Um, and you can actually modify that to create like new areas or, or add things in. Um, that said, at least today, um, there, there appears to be something wrong with that. Um, it was working yesterday. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, I'm not, you know, that's fine. It's, it's a beta. That's what betas are for. And there we go. We are now wandering around uh, the vacation location that I cannot afford. Uh, oh, cool. There's like a mountain range back there. That's kind of neat. Um, okay, let's talk about um, some elephants in the room and uh, some limitations, but also exactly what we can do with this. 
So for one, especially when you have uh, kind of realistic environments, um, you know, the more detail packed things are, um, there is, I mean, for lack of a better term, kind of like a, a, a Gaussian crunchiness uh, to a lot of the textures and details. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also, while the model does do a pretty good job of like a location uh, and even kind of implying that uh, other areas exist, um, there, there actually are not other areas. Um, so it, it does occasionally create rooms within a room. For example, here's one, let's make ourselves a little bit taller here. Um, and like, this is the initial input image. Um, but there is actually this whole other room over here. And I think there's, yeah, there's one over here as well. I don't want to go too far into this because this is clearly where the murderer is. And obviously there's no like interactivity actually, as we wander out here. Yeah. You can see kind of like there, there's the boundaries. Um, and we wander over to this and like, we can't open this door. And obviously if we wander like too far outside of the bounds of the splat, uh, we kind of, you know, exit essentially the world, uh, which actually is kind of, it was kind of cool in its own sort of right. Uh, if you actually do find yourself completely lost, you can just hit the zero key and that'll take you right back to your starting point. So look, while there are some limitations, I mean, you guys know me, friction is like gasoline for creativity because there is a ton of stuff that you can do with marble. And we're gonna talk about all that in just a minute, but first let's take a look at a project I put together with World Labs. Shift work begins in one rotation. Shift work begins in one rotation. Shift work begins. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm up. Compliance acknowledge. Next sleep in 17 hours. People always think working on a station is so adventurous. It's really not. The food is terrible. We never get to sleep and. Shift work begins in one half rotation. I sleep in my clothes and put up with that voice all the time. But you know what? For this view, it's all worth it. <laughs> Shift work begins in one quarter rotation. Oh yeah? How many rotations until the coffee maker is fixed? <sighs> so yeah, there you go. A consistent character in a consistent location. And that solves a lot of issues with AI filmmaking. And if you're wondering about like chaining rooms together for much larger environments, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But first, let's do a quick breakdown on how that short film was made right after a quick word from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. You know, given that this is a channel that covers the bleeding edge of AI video, you might be wondering how today's sponsor, Storyblocks, comes into play. And that is a valid question because obviously a lot of people have been quick to proclaim the death of stock footage now that AI can generate video and imagery at the level it does. But honestly, that is not the case. I use stock footage all the time on this channel, especially to experiment with video to video features. But that's the thing with story blocks is that it's not just images and video. Actually, here's a little secret. I am fairly terrible with After Effects. I, like, I think like a lot of you, I know just enough to get myself into trouble. So one massive time saver for me is to utilize the huge library of After Effects templates that are available on Storyblocks. You can take some AI generated shots, say if you're trying to do a title sequence or uh, maybe even like a sizzle reel and you know, utilizing one of these templates, you very quickly have a polished sequence that looks like it took days to build. And it's not just After Effects effects. Storyblocks also has templates for Premiere Pro, uh, DaVinci Resolve, and Apple Motion. But if you do work in the Adobe ecosystem, uh, you can access the entire Storyblocks library right inside your workflow with their Creative Cloud plugin. And here's the big one. With Storyblocks, you get unlimited downloads of diverse, high-quality media for one predictable subscription cost. That means HD, 4K, motion graphics, sound effects, and more without worrying about hidden fees. Plus, every download is royalty free and pre licensed in perpetuity. So you can stay focused on creating and not, you know, double checking legal clearances. As I've always said, the best AI films are a fusion of human creativity and generated material. And Storyblocks is the perfect bridge for that. My thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. And you know, uh, you can actually get an extra two months for free with the annual plan for a limited time. Uh, just click on that link down below. Moving on. So I put Alarm together in about like, I don't know, like three hours yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna kind of blaze through this walkthrough. If you have any questions on anything, just let me know in the comments. So I started by creating this environment 
environment in World Labs. Uh, this is actually one of their preset ones or templated ones. Um, but I did actually, when you know the text prompting thing was working yesterday, uh, it was kind of a janky mess. But uh, I told it that the door opens up to like the, the like a space station city behind it. I didn't give it too many details, so it didn't really go too far with it. But uh, so yes, you can modify. Um, you know, your environments if you want to. From here, I basically just explored the environment. And when I found something that I thought would make for a cool shot, I just hit the little take screenshot button there and boom, instant screenshot. And then, you know, you just kind of move on to the next angle of uh, where you want to, you know, have a scene happening. Now, obviously those screenshots do have that like telltale Gaussian splat artifacting, kind of a low poly look. Uh, so the trick around that is to, well, either like use Dano Banana, Sea Dream, or Rev, which actually I looked at earlier this week. Week. Rev handled it very easily just with a prompt of like, you know, clean this image up, make it look more cinematic. Once we had our location shots, uh, it was really just a matter of bringing in uh, our character. Uh, we've used her a couple of times on the channel recently. One quick note, I do highly recommend creating like 360 turnaround videos of your characters. Uh, this stuff comes in really handy when you're, you know, bringing them into any one of the AI image editors at this point, uh, namely because, you know, you can pause at any point in time and now you have a reverse angle shot that you can screenshot or export or whatever to bring into your environment. Like having a back angle was pretty clutch for a shot like this. Two quick follow-up notes on Rev. Uh, something that I missed in the last video is uh, there's actually this edit button up here after a generation. It'll sort of segment out um, and then sub-segment out various areas within your image uh, and that you can edit essentially, you know, if you just want to say this bookshelf edited, you can reprompt for that. Uh, or like her hand is kind of a mess here. I like that it named her Catherine Waterston. Um, I have no idea why, uh, but obviously, you know, we can, we can actually target her left hand that way, essentially, you know, it will only alter that part of the image. So kind of neat. And on the pricing, like free side of things, uh, I talked to Christian Cantrell over there who kind of clarified the policy on the free tier. Uh, apparently everybody gets a few hours of free usage when they sign up. And then uh, the daily free usage after that is more like 15 minutes. Uh, to note that's like GPU time, not like you don't have to like set a timer and then start prompting very quickly. <laughs> From there, I took the images over to Google Flow and utilized uh, VO3 for them. Um, I mean, you know, typical VO3 took a number of rolls to get what I was looking for. Most of these were run in VO3 quality, basically because I had a, a bunch of, you know, credits to burn through. So uh, I figured we'd use them here. Once we had all of our material generated, uh, I did a quick cut and then brought it over to Topaz's Astra uh, for a uh, precise and quality uh, upscale, which I do think does a really good job of kind of taking out that like overall AI sharpness, I guess, uh, kind of like cleans up the image a pretty good amount and uh, does a really good job with like, again, that kind of like overly blaring sharpness. And then for some final tricks, I ended up bringing the Topaz output back over to uh, Premiere. I use Premiere, you can use whatever like nonlinear editor you want. Uh, they all do the same thing. Um, the I added in a layer of dust and scratches. I mean, I don't even think anybody can see that. It's set to like, uh, was that like 19%? So yeah, it's mostly there for my peace of mind. Uh, from there, I popped in a blue blurred highlight adjustment level here. Um, that, you know, just kind of gives it that JJ Abrams lens player thing. I did keep it really subtle. Uh, didn't want to go like full JJ on this one. From there, a slight camera blur. Um, so this was set to uh, 31%. The blend mode was set to lighten. Uh, and then it's at like a blur percentage of like 10%. So again, it's, it's kind of just acting like Vaseline over the lens, kind of like helping like sh like soften up that AI-ness. Uh, and then the last thing was just uh, a good old vignette because I like vignettes. Music was done in Suno. And well, I mean, to be honest, I got a little bit lazy at the end and I did not swap out the voices like I told you all that you should in the 10 Secrets of AI Filmmaking video. Oh, you haven't seen that video? It's a good thing it's linked down below. And man, we are not even done yet. That is just the filmmaking side because yeah, it gets crazier from here. It is a little above my pay grade to be honest, but even if you don't completely understand the technical details, you will see the potential here. So because marble can export as Gaussian splats, there's a ton of stuff you can do with it. Uh, for example, you can you could make a game in 3JS. Now this is something that probably all of us can accomplish even with non-technical skills, basically with a little like vibe coding assistance from ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, or whatever. Moving up the ladder, well, you can bring it into Unreal and do all of your Unreal things to it. This, this one is definitely above my pay grade but I think the 3D package that most of the viewers of this channel are probably familiar and gravitate towards is of course Blender. Um, so, you know, you can bring the splat in, clean up 
uh, you know, all of your Gaussian splats in Blender, uh, do all of your Blender stuff. Now, as for creating bigger environments, like multi-room locations, well, again, like 3D is not my world, but uh, Britannia Natale showcases here, uh, utilizing Poser, interestingly, um, that, you know, we have these like four locations, essentially, these are marble uh, worlds. Um, and again, utilizing Poser, we can kind of like line each of these locations up, export the whole thing out, and now you have this like multi-room location that you can wander around in. Um, yeah, that's pretty insane. And finally, for the higher-ended tech folks, uh, you might be wondering, this would be really cool in VR. Well, you know what? You can export as VR. You know what the whole thing kind of reminds me of? Did you guys see the Black Mirror episode, Eulogy, the one with uh, Paul Giamatti, where he kind of walks through old photos from his life? Yeah, it's a bit like that. So once again, I guess kind of proving we do live in a Black Mirror episode. Uh, that said, this was one of the more heartfelt ones. So, you know, it isn't all like doom and gloom. Ultimately, what's awesome about all of this is there's just a lot of different ways to approach World Labs Marble, and that's super exciting. Everything from my like bonehead 2D kit bashing methods to full on 3D software packages. And yes, you can start playing with it today. Now, uh, I am in the beta and I believe that allows me to create environments, sign up for that. But in the meantime, uh, while you're waiting, you can essentially come and use any one of these environments that are here. Um, the creations that I made, I will actually share publicly. Those will be linked down in the description. So if you wanna play with those, uh, more than welcome. In the meantime, there are a ton of environments here and definitely varied enough that, uh, you know, you can essentially make like almost any kind of like short film uh, that you wanted to accomplish. Um, and in the meantime, just, you know, get an idea of what the model is capable of and what it is not capable of. And again, not to harp on this, but remember limitations are invitations to get creative. Uh, look, the way that everything's going anyhow the current limitations won't be around for very long instead we'll have an entirely new set of limitations that we're gonna have to try to figure out i mean that is the gig so yeah go ahead over to world labs play around with marble sign up for the beta wait list uh definitely let me know what you think in the comments as always i thank you for watching my name is tim